Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am very good, Brian Zipsy. I can't believe that I'm going to say this. We're just about three weeks until the Kentucky Derby. 23 days at time of taping, Matt. The Derby's almost upon us, and that's what everybody in the horse racing world is talking about. So let's dive right in, Matt. First thing I want to do is a race that was in my neck of the woods, the Bluegrass of Kentucky at beautiful Keeneland. It was the Bluegrass, and essential quality had work to do down the lane, Matt. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. Uh, headed into the race, four for four, came out of the race, still unbeaten, five for five. But I'll tell you, Brian, highly motivated, ran a really nice race. And coming down the stretch, I, I wasn't sure that essential quality was going to get the win. I kind of was, Matt. And, and maybe it's because what I saw in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, I just think essential quality is that type of horse. I, I really never doubted he was going to get there. But you're right, highly motivated, ran a very good race. He broke well. No speed in this bluegrass. So highly motivated was the one who went to the lead. And that made essential quality chase that heavy second choice early. And uh, he waited, he waited under Luis Saez, but when he was laid down late, he got past a stubborn foe, Matt. I think these are two of the top three-year-olds in the country right now. I think it was a very good performance, a very good bluegrass, at least the top two, essential quality, five for five, still an undefeated champion. Yes, absolutely. And I agree, Brian. I think those two are legitimate Kentucky Derby contenders. Absolutely. Speaking of legitimate Kentucky Derby contenders, Matt, why don't we, uh, that's a perfect segue, if you will, to ask everyone out there to subscribe to the YouTube uh, channel here on Horse Racing Nation or the Horse Racing Nation channel here on YouTube, whichever the case may be, Matt. But it's a perfect segue also into our Kentucky Derby top 10, Matt. Surely essential quality is number one on that list. Has Tony thrown it up yet? No, Matt. Who's our number one? It is not essential quality. I think we uh, came to the consensus that it is concert tour for Bob Baffert. Well, it's a consensus in that you had him number one and I had him number one. So that is certainly a consensus. The son of street sense, Matt, he's done nothing wrong as well. We talked about essential quality undefeated in five starts. Concert tours only had three starts. He's undefeated, of course. All of his starts came this year. And what I really kind of like about concert tour Matt is he was able to win nicely in a debut sprint he was able to win nicely or, or at least look good late in the San Vicente at seven furlongs at Santa Anita then he ships uh, over to Oakland Park and he stretches out to two turns and that's what I really like about concert tour the most the way he stretched out so successfully in the rebel stakes I'll tell you what I like most about Concert Tour, Brian, is the way that he has uh, gotten those victories. Uh, uh, to me, Concert Tour is a much more composed and maybe a little more level-headed and, and, and uh, just more easygoing than recent Baffert horses like Authentic and Life is Good that kept you and I from like questioning what was going on with those horses. Um, Concert Tour seems to just do things much more uh, easily. And I like that a lot. Yeah, well, American Pharaoh was that way. We're not comparing Concert Tour to American Pharaoh yet, Matt, but he is taking a similar path, more lightly raised path, but a similar path as American Pharaoh did many years ago. That's through Arkansas, and he's going to run in the Arkansas Derby. We're going to talk a lot, a whole lot more about the Arkansas Derby soon, Matt, but it looks like he is definitely the one to beat in a pretty short field for that million dollar race. Yeah, that is for sure. Concert Tour, we like him. Bob Baffert's proven it in the Triple Crown in the Kentucky Derby. I think Concert Tour is only asking for more distance. Number two on our list, Matt, no surprise, no surprise. There he is, the undefeated champion, five for five, the son of Tappet, the gray, handsome son of Tappet, trained by Brad Cox, essential quality, a very deserving horse to have in our top two. Yeah, and fans might be saying, Brian, Matt, you got to be kidding me. How can you not have essential quality on top? Well, we got three for three horse on top, a five for five horse in the second spot. That's eight for eight combined for the two. Yes. And fans, I, 
I agree with you. Uh, probably Brian does. Essential Quality has done very little wrong in those five races, and and uh, uh, the victory in the in the Bluegrass showed good determination down the stretch at Keeneland, a racetrack that we know he likes a great deal. But he has taken his show on the road before. Yeah, he's also one for one at Churchill Downs, I think. So yeah, Essential Quality. There's nothing not to like about essential quality in my mind, Matt. He's just a really nice horse who fires every time. Should like a distance. He's number two. Number three, you were talking undefeated. Interestingly, you had this horse a little higher on your list. He made consensus number three, Matt. Tell me about Rock Your World and why, why you like him so darn much. Hey, Brian, you know, and, and here we go again. There's three for three in the third spot in our top 10. So between them, we've got 11 for 11 in our top three spots. But hey, I, you know, going into the Santa Anita Derby, I was a little skeptical turf horse, but you know, that kind of natural. Can he do it on the dirt? And, and he did it on the dirt, Brian, right out of the gate. Uh, um, got, got into a nice smooth stride and kept it going all the way around the racetrack. And I like that, you know, and the way things have been in the Kentucky Derby um, in the past seven or eight years, uh, having speed, being able to be part of the pace or press the pace or set the pace is a, has been a significant factor to success in the run for the Roses. All right, Matt, he, I already said he's not my number three, so I don't like him quite as much as you do. I liked him. I bet him in the Santa Anita Derby, but I, I just feel like, now, and don't get me wrong, folks, that was a very impressive, one of the most impressive races run yet by this crop, a uh, front running, pretty much domination. Protonico and Parnelli uh, were there close, but Rock Your World always looked good, always looked strong, and was clearly best as they entered the Santa Anita Derby stretch. Impressive performance for the Sonic Candy Ride. But I'll tell you what, two races on the turf, uh, and then the Santa Anita Derby, it, it, he's going to run into a whole different world. First, he's going to leave Southern California for this first time. There's a bunch of speed in this Kentucky Derby, unless we have significant scratches, including our number one. There's a bunch of horses who want to be on or near the lead. So by no means do I think he's going to have it easy in the Kentucky Derby. Having said that, he looks so good that I had to have him pretty high on my list too, but I just worry what we, we're going to go from, from a first dirt experience on the lead in the Santa Anita Derby to a 20 horse field and a mile and a quarter Churchill Downs on the first Saturday in May for number three. Who's my number three? My number three is the next horse on the list, Matt. You better believe it's Hot Rod Charlie, son of Oxbow, Matt, won the Preakness, a grandson of Awesome Again, who pretty much has become just about my favorite uh, dirt distance uh, influence sire over the years. So I think Hot Rod Charlie is going to be just fine at a mile and a quarter. Doug O'Neill's been there before, and I like the way Hot Rod Charlie's coming up to this Kentucky Derby. Can't argue with you, Brian. You know I like Hot Rod Charlie also. I liked him going into the Louisiana Derby, and, and, and he did me proud in there. Like you said, Doug O'Neill. Uh, two-time Kentucky Derby winner, uh, Hot Rod Charlie. Is he the horse, Brian, that can uh, bring the Louisiana Derby and the road to the Kentucky Derby going through the fairgrounds? Can he be the one that gets them a little credit? Yeah, and, and, and the fairgrounds has been a good prep over the years. You know, I'm, I'm going way back probably to Risen Star, which was showing my age a little bit, but uh, they've had good horses run down in Louisiana. I know, I know a Louisiana Derby winner hasn't won the Derby lately, but I think this year it could happen. I like the switch to a mile three sixteenths, and I certainly like the way Hot Rod Charlie did it. I also like, Matt, the way he can pass horses. We saw that in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, where he came from uh, at least the middle of the pack to make, his, uh, make that quick move. And I, I think that's a move I would love to see happen in the Kentucky Derby. Maybe not quite so far back as he was in that fast-paced Breeders' Cup Juvenile. But with the speed I was talking about earlier, I think uh, the fact that Hot Rod Charlie can, can sit relatively close, but then have that burst of speed there makes me think he is a big danger come Breeders' Cup. Interestingly, I'm, I'm letting you know a little bit about how both Matt and I are thinking here. Rock Your World was my five. Hot Rod Charlie was Matt's five. Number four for both of us 
was our number five consensus horse. That's known agenda, Matt. And this is another horse who should want to go 10 furlongs. Completely agree. And, and known agenda got that big win, a little bit of an upset win in the Florida Derby. Um, and, you know, go back just a couple weekends ago, Brian, and it looked like Todd Pletcher was maybe going to have no horses in the Kentucky Derby, turn the calendar a couple of weeks, and now Pletcher has got four horses in the top 20, probably headed to the Kentucky Derby, and maybe those four are headed by known agenda. Yeah, I think they are headed by known agenda, not the Florida Derby winner. He was impressive uh, winning an allowance race at Gulfstream Park. He struggled a little bit, but there are some there are some things you can say for a horse learning uh, the game a little bit. He struggled when he was third in the slop in the Remsen last fall, and he was way too far back in the Sam Davis. He got to Gulfstream, completely turned it around with a huge allowance win, an impressive Florida Derby win. I, I don't know if who's as impressive, say, as the Rebel or the Santa Anita Derby or the Bluegrass, but he looked like a horse striding out with that low stride, bred for a distance, uh, looked like a horse who would be just fine at 10 furlongs. Here's something now, and I don't know if it, it's partly the, the connections, uh, Vinny Viola, trainer Todd Pletcher, of course, and Pletcher could have seven in this year's Derby, not who knows, I'm, I'm teasing, of course, but he reminds me of, of a horse I really liked just a few years ago, and, and people gave me the business a little bit because I always was on this course and finally he vindicated uh, me a little bit in the Breeders' Cup Classic. He's Vino Rosso. And I, if he turns out to be as good as Vino Rosso, that's a good thing. But on the other hand, Vino Rosso was a real grinder. And I, I think Known Agenda might be a little bit the same type of horse. I don't know if that bodes well in a 20 horse field in the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, we'll have to see. And, and you know, people kind of have to uh, change the way they think about Todd Pletcher. Uh, uh, because uh, this late developing patient with his three-year-old is, is become the new Todd Pletcher. The new Todd Pletcher, I love it. Uh, should be inducted into the Hall of Fame in a few months as well, the new Todd Pletcher. And what about Chad Brown, Matt? What about Chad Brown? He, no trainer has been more successful over the entire year uh, in recent years than trainer Chad Brown, but he hasn't won a Kentucky Derby yet. He's gonna try to do it this year with highly motivated and after the bluegrass, I'm just a little bit more motivated to think he's got a shot. I agree with that, Brian. And, and as we all know, so much of Chad Brown's success in the past has been with, uh, with turf stars, both male and female. And he hasn't had a lot of horses uh, run in the Kentucky Derby. He hasn't had a lot of Kentucky Derby contenders, even, even to, to that extent. But yeah, uh, a highly motivated uh was maybe a little bit of a disappointing third in the Gotham because we're so used to Chad Brown's horses firing right out of the box, but uh, uh, he made up for it in uh, in uh, Bluegrass when he went right out of the gate and got on the lead. And as we mentioned before, uh, uh, has now shown some versatility in his running style, which can be helpful in the Kentucky Derby. Right. I, I talked about a little bit about that with Hot Rod Charlie, and I think that's true. I think you're right with highly motivated. However, I will say I do not expect him to be on or even really close to the lead in the Kentucky Derby. I think he's a horse who only showed speed in the bluegrass because that was the thing to do. The good thing about the bluegrass was he broke well after not breaking well on the Gotham. I'm convinced that he would have won the Gotham with a better break out of the gate. That bluegrass was uh, more like it for highly motivated. But on the other hand, Matt Schiffman, he was on a pretty slow pace and he still couldn't hold off essential quality. I think he could move forward, but that worries me a little bit, especially about a horse who I think might be better at nine than 10 furlongs. Yeah, fair enough, Brian. All right, the next horse on the list is a horse who hasn't won his last couple and uh, just like highly motivated. Medina Spirit is a son of Pertonico, who's a grandson, he's a grandson of Giants Causeway, which means distance. And Medina Spirit finishes all his races off well. He's always fighting to the wire to beat that horse that he's with. The problem is the last two races, he wasn't really with Life is Good or Rock Your World. Yeah, and it's one thing, Brian, to not be with uh, life is good. It's another thing to be 
a good distance, a non-challenging second behind uh, Rock the World. Uh, uh, you know, uh, definitely not in uh, trainer Bob Baffert's uh, first string. Um, you know, he's got enough points to be in the Derby, but for me, um, he's going to have to do a lot better. And, and I don't know if the extra distance is going to be uh, what he needs to do that in the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, I think the extra distance could help him and as is his connections of Baffert doing so well in the Derby over years, because I think he's, he's a type of horse that could be close to the lead and still finish. Um, his performance in the Santa, Dirty, Santa Anita Derby reminded me again, I'm going back way back to another Baffert trained horse, Real Quiet, who, who really was no match for Indian Charlie in the Santa Anita Derby. But then when they got to 10 furlongs, things were a little different. Maybe Real Quiet has a little bit more ability to pass horses, but Medina Spirit could be a little bit like Real Quiet was uh, well over 20 years ago. Now, Matt Schiff, and I got to ask you, because I, when I submitted my top 10, it changed a little bit because we had a few defections. Rebels Romance folks will not be coming over. He's pointing for the Belmont. Uh, of course, Greatest Honor now we know has a, has a little bit of a, 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 an issue where he's going to be arrested for a while. So he's going to miss the Kentucky Derby. But even my next Kentucky Derby top 10, where I knew those horses were out, I did not have a horse from the Wood Memorial on my list. You had two, and here they are, starting with number eight, Dynamic One. Now, tell me why you like these Wood Memorial long shots. Well, Brian, we have to put some other horses in there, or we're just going to have a top seven. So, um, <laughs> well, in serious, more seriously, folks, um, hey, if you remember, Dynamic One was my, long, was my long shot pick to win the Wood Memorial, and he made a really nice move. Uh, mid stretch took the lead easily. And I thought I was home with my long shot pick at 15 to one until I looked out my rear view mirror and saw another horse coming, but we'll talk about that. Uh, uh, dynamic one, another one of these Todd Pletcher horses who is developing late. I liked, I had dynamic one in my list of Kentucky Derby contenders way, 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 way back in earlier in the year but it's taken him time and it looks like he's putting the pieces together. Yeah. I know the, the times come up slowly at aqueduct because of the nature of the racetrack. It's so deep. Uh, and there was no real pace in the race. They went, you know, I don't know what it was one fourteen or one fifteen for three quarters, but dynamic one still came running. Yeah. Yeah. Matt, kudos to you because, uh, I threw him in my cross country pick five and I thought you were home free, which meant I was home free in my would have would have been a winning cross country pick five. But of course, Dynamic One couldn't hold off his stable mate late for Bonnick down the stretch there. Uh, Matt, I worry uh, because Dynamic One's only two wins. He's clearly moving forward. He's clearly getting better this on a Union Rex, but I worry his only two wins came at Aqueduct in slow times. And I'll say this too, Matt, against the Wood Horses. The wood lovers, sorry if I'm jumping so hard on that and the wood memorial horses, but there were three stakes races around at nine furlongs that day, and the wood was the slowest. Modernist, an older, decent older four year old ran faster, and the Philly search results ran faster in the Gazelle. That worries me moving forward. But anyway, Matt, it was bombs away in the wood because Dynamic One was a long shot, a legitimate long shot. But he was nowhere near the uh, horse who beat him and the horse who's now number nine on our list. Where the heck did Burbonic come from, Matt, both in the Wood Memorial and from anywhere to get on our Kentucky Derby top 10 list, Matt? I I'm, I'm, I'm befuddled. It was quite, it, it was quite a story. Uh, you know, 72 to one, Todd Pletcher, the other Todd Pletcher, uh, the two combined, the two Todd Pletchers for Todd Pletcher runners combined to make a $900 exacta. But anyway, um, I, I immediately after the race flipped open my racing form to say, to say, why was this horse 72 to one? And then I, and I said, why was this horse 72 to one? He had won twice um, at Aqueduct before that. One of them was a maiden claimer. Uh, but let's face it, a legitimate surprise. He was a legitimate surprise to Todd Pletcher himself, who the horse was only in the race because the Calumet owner, Brad Kelly, said to Pletcher, 
hey, Todd, can you find a points race and give Burbonic a chance? And, you know, Todd Bletcher's a, a good trainer. He said yes to the owner, put him in the Wood Memorial. And uh, I guess I would like to have Brad Kelly uh, picking horses for me more often because it was the, it was the classic. The last move was the best move. And in the replay uh, that Tony, our producer, is putting up, he's got uh, Burbonic circled all the way at the back of the pack. The last move was the best move. And he caught Dynamic one right at the wire. Yeah, he did, Matt. He caught him right at the wire. And maybe he wants a mile and a quarter, this son of Bernardini. But hey, listen, you're, you're right. There was a reason why he was 72 to one. He just didn't look very good in the form. His record of Aqueducts is three for three, which may in hindsight be a, been a good thing for the wood, but those wins didn't look very good. And then all of a sudden he wins this wood. It kind of makes me think that the wood just wasn't very good, but I could be wrong. I'm glad to see Todd, Pl this is now Todd Pletcher's top 10. It's not Bob Baffert's top 10. It's not Brad Cox's top 10. This is Todd Pletcher's top 10 with three of our top nine being from a trainer I like, Todd Fletcher. It was bombs away. Kudos to any Horse Center fan who had that exact hit. Tell us in the comments that you had that exact hit. You really did have that exact hit. Matt, number 10 on our list is a horse I had in my top 10. Son of Twirling Candy, Ron Bauer, for, trained by Mike McCarthy. He doesn't really run bad races. He's had two this year. I like both of them. I know he was well beaten in the bluegrass, Matt Schiffman, but there was no pace. And I think he wants to rally. So the fact that he was a clear third in the bluegrass without pace makes me think he's a sleeper a little bit for the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, I agree with that, Brian. He's going to be a good price in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, trainer Michael McCarthy had him uh, out in California winning the El Camino Real Derby on the artificial surface at Golden Gate Field shipped across the country. To Keeneland and like you said ran a solid race in third yes he was a good distance behind the top two that were knocking heads uh down the stretch but he was clearly uh third best in the bluegrass yeah and it's the pace in the Kentucky Derby and if he gets 10 furlongs maybe he's a horse who can uh kind of saunter saunter it might not be the right word for a thoroughbred racehorse of high quality but saunter up into those trifectas or superfectas that we'll be trying for the kentucky derby all right matt that's our top 10 folks i hope you like that list and i'm sure you have differences on your list but this is something that matt and i put together for your entertainment and to see where we're thinking just three weeks or so out from the kentucky derby matt i think our producer tony bada bing at this time would like to put up something new that we're going to do on Horse Center. He's calling it the pick scorecard. I think he just likes to put it up to embarrass us a little bit. He didn't put it up when I had a nice trifecta in the Florida Derby. I'll tell you that much, Matt. But here, anyway, here's our pick scorecard. How'd you do, Matt? I think, I think we both did okay in there, Brian. We, we had some, uh, uh, you had some winners in there. My, so we had long shot picks that ran well. We had some seconds and thirds. So, um, I think we gave out some some decent advice on those three races last weekend. Yeah, but we didn't have Verbonic, Matt. So it's all it's all just uh, it, it's no fun if we don't have the seventy two to one shot triggering a gigantic exacta. We we certainly didn't. I don't know many people who who did honestly. I had the Santa Anita Derby exacta, Matt, but I was hoping for a little bit better odds on Rocky World. I should have yeah. known. Yeah. John Sadler's undefeated horse would get that uh, a little bit. And uh, I think that exactly was 37 and $38. Your long shot, say dynamic one. I thought he was home free. We'll look to do even better uh, as we move forward with these pick scorecard. And, and that's going to lead us into our uh, one big race this week. Well, Oaklawn Park actually has a pretty darn good card. I'm excited to see Whitmore, CZ Rocket, some other fast horses in the count fleet. Uh, we got the return of By My Standards and Rushy heading the uh, Oaklawn Mile on that card. But of course, we want to talk about the Derby horses uh, running in the Arkansas Derby. Unfortunately, it only has a field of six, Matt, the million dollar race. And I wonder now if even three weeks before the Kentucky Derby is becoming a trend that trainers want to stay away from. Yeah, Brian, I felt the same way, you know, in, in, when I saw the six horse field drawn for, as you, as you said, a million dollars and... Uh, and the big spread of qualifying points, um, 
the conclusion I came to was what you said that maybe uh, Oakland Park's going to have to reconsider uh, being three weeks out as being too close uh, to the Kentucky Derby itself. And, and, you know, that seems to make sense the way trainers are uh, these days, especially if in their minds they're thinking about running in any of the other Triple Crown races. Yeah, but back in the day, Matt, I don't know how many horses I liked who ran in the bluegrass just nine days before yeah. the Kentucky Derby. So anyway, I digress. Matt, we got to start this Arkansas Derby uh, list with Concert Tour, obviously. He's going to be an odds-on favorite. And it looks very much like the Rebel. Uh, the top five of these six horses, Matt, are all coming out of the Rebel. And Concert Tour was much the best in the Rebel. He was much the best. Uh, none of these horses... Uh, that uh, ran in the Rebel with him could give him any competition, as we alluded to earlier and earlier in the race. Right out of the gate, um, he got to the lead and 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 took the race uh, all the way around the track and, and seemed to be doing it so easily without a lot of urging from uh, from Joel Rosario. So. I think uh, concert tour is going to be very hard to beat, especially with Baffert's record shipping, uh, shipping horses to Oak Lawn Park. Yeah. And Joel Rosario certainly is a hot jockey. What's interesting to me about this race, Matt, is last time he took the lead away from the expected leader. And remember, Cato River was the favorite for that rebel. So Cato River uh, let concert tour take the lead and he tried to stalk him in second. It didn't work. The son of Hardspawn, I think, is still a very talented horse. I have no idea if he's ever going to run 10 furlongs successfully or not, but I think he's still a very talented horse, despite fading out of the picture a little bit. This time, Brad Cox says they're just going to let him run. If that means he's on the lead, he's on the lead. If that means Concert Tour runs even faster to be ahead of him early, so be it. But they are not going to try to hold Cato River back in any way in this nine furlong Arkansas Derby. And I think that's smart. He's a speed horse. Let him go, see what happens. I think that I think that adds a little bit of a new dynamic for concert tour. Let's see if he can sit in second. He did it sprinting. Let's see if he can do it in a distance race. And let's see if he can run down a talented speed horse. Or maybe he has to run faster early. And then we'll see how he stands up to the nine furlongs after a fast pace. So either way, I think Cato River uh, running free, if you will, presents some uh, a, a new dynamic, at least for the heavy favorite concert tour. The horse who rallied up for second in that rebel matt was also trained by pop Baffert. his name is hosier son of pioneer the nile can he do it again here in the arkansas derby uh, well let me digress for a second and you know and talk a little bit about that pace scenario that you described uh, uh, that all assumes brian zipsy if you're buying into the fact that they were raiding Cato river or if in reality he just got his butt whooped by concert tour on the front end so you're assuming that Cato River is going to be able to get the lead from Concert Tour and that Baffert's going to let uh, Con uh, Cato River get the lead. I'm not convinced that that's going to happen. Listen to me sounding like a Bob Baffert uh, uh, cheerleader here. But uh, yeah, I mean, that may well be. I was very disappointed with Cato River's performance uh, in, the, uh, in the Rebel because of his lack of competing with concert tour in any way at all so uh can he turn that around i don't know if they send him great guns to the lead okay maybe he'll get a lead for a while but uh this is concert tour we're talking about so uh it, back to hosier is hosier the most likely horse to uh get a piece of of this maybe fast pace well if he can put together another race like he had in the rebel uh, we could be looking at a Baffert exacta. We could be looking at a Baffert exacta, but I hope not. And, and I think Hozier, you know, Cato River was uh, a little bit uh, frustrated for not being able to keep up with Concert Tour. He backed out a little bit. Superstock was making his first start of the year. Get her number was making his first start in a long time in that Rebel. So Hozier kind of came off the rail and got second, but I wasn't super impressed with that effort. Maybe he gets second again, but I'm going to try to beat him. Getting back to Cato River, Matt, I don't think he was, um, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Concert Tour is on the lead early here as well. But I think, I think any sort of rating of Cattle River, which I do think happened just a little bit in the Rebel, 
is not going to happen here. So my guess is Caddo River gets the lead, but maybe concert, like I said, maybe concert tour is on the lead. Anyway, I think the pace is going to be faster, and I, and I think you're going to see a free running Caddo River. And I think he's a talented horse. As I think Superstock might still be a pretty talented horse, or at least a hard trying horse. He's been on the board in a bunch of stakes races, including mostly last year. He had a little bit of traffic in the Rebel. He rallied for fourth. I think this race might set up for him a little bit better second time off the layoff and with a little bit more contested pace this time. Yeah, I agree with that, Brian. And you, and you mentioned that he uh, did some good running as a two-year-old. Uh, he was second in that street sense at Churchill Downs. He was third in the Breeders' Futurity. He was third in the Iroquois as a, as a developing two-year-old for Steve Asmussen. He gets uh, Asmussen's number one uh, uh, rider in Ricardo Santana on board. Um, I like Superstock also in this race as the horse that I want to finish second. Yeah, especially with the odds. He, he, he certainly should be the fourth choice in here. And uh, yeah, I could certainly see him rallying up for second behind Concert Tour. Uh, we're both assuming Concert Tour is able to put away Cattle River again. Superstock makes a lot of sense. I don't think he's the type of horse that can win the Kentucky Derby, but a short field with speed, he can rally second time off the layoff. I like him better than the other horse who's making a second time off the layoff, get her number. I guess he had some trouble in the Rebel too, but didn't love what I saw from him. Plus, he's a little bit more speedy. So I think he's going to be in third early. And I, I don't know how he wins this Arkansas Derby, frankly. Yeah, he's going to be, uh, even if his, even if he's Im improves and gets a better performance than last time, he's going to be up against it in terms of the pace scenario, as you mentioned, as a horse that has uh, done his best when showing speed when he's got the likes of Cotter River and Contra Tour in there. Yeah, and, and the sixth horse in this field, not his last samurai, I guess he can prove off the sloppy, his only race this year was on a sloppy track for trainer Dallas Stewart, but I, I like him about as much as I liked Burbonic last week. Uh-oh. 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 <laughs> Don't throw Burbonic in there. Yeah, it's another Dallas Stewart, another probably late-running Dallas Stewart long shot. I, I don't like him uh, in this spot. So who's your top pick? Who's your long shot, Matt? My top pick uh, is Go Bob Baffert is a concert tour. And my long shot is Superstock. It's hard to get creative when our number one horse on our Kentucky Derby list is facing a six horse field. So Matt, I'm going to have to agree with you. My top pick is concert tour. My top long shot also is Superstock. Well, we disagreed, but we disagreed on everything last week. So I guess it's okay we agree on one race with six horses this week. That's right, Matt. I hope that's not your parting shot, though. No, no, no. My parting shot, hey, uh, folks, last of the Derby preps this weekend, and then Brian and I are going to have our big Derby shows for you. We'll run down the field, our favorite rate uh, uh, wagers. And before the show, I was saying to Brian and Tony, boy, I have got a bomb horse in the Kentucky Derby for my trifecta bet. Oh, I like it already, Matt. Don't, don't give it away yet. So yeah. let them want, uh, leave them wanting more. Uh, but I kind of, I, I kind of know who your bomb is and I, I kind of like them a little bit too. Uh, hey, Matt, you know, we are going to be doing a lot of Kentucky Derby in the next three weeks, but we also have a great day again next week at Oakland Park because I am, I'm geeked, Matt. Let's face it, I'm geeked. Nothing, no other word would fit how I'm feeling about a Monomoy girl and a Swiss skydiver reunion in the Apple Blossom, the, uh, the big Apple Blossom next week at Oakland Park. So we got to talk about that next week. I, I think we got to talk more Kentucky Oaks too. So there's a lot to look forward to every week. And it's not only Kentucky Derby here on Horse Center. Thanks to Candace Curtis for the race graphic. Thanks to Tony Bottabing for everything he does to make us look palatable to all you out there in Horse Center land. Uh, folks, we'll be right back here next week on Horse Center. Thanks to our sponsor, Derby Wars. I can't forget them. They're the best contest site out there. We'll see you next week right here on Horse Center.